for season 20, performed by Mary J. Blige, who will be here on Friday. And uh, we just want to point out on this occasion that we want to give our kudos uh, to Barbara Walters. This is the house that Barbara Walters built. Happy to say that we're going into our 20th season. Oh my God. <laughs> we got a bit of, you guys, we got a little bit of a facelift. It looks great in here. Excuse me? I mean, I'm saying the stage, the set, so props to all of our people behind the scenes. It looks fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it, can you? It's 20 years, a long time. I've well, you, 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 you know, with your two year break, yeah. you've been here the longest. I have been here the longest. It's you know? been like, and I. Great to watch. No, but it's been, a, it's, you know, I believe that careers are all about longevity. You know, even if you don't make a lot, a lot, a lot of money, mm -hmm. stay in it if you can, as long as you can, mm -hmm. because that's really, you have to do something with your life, even when you're old, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and we're also welcoming our newest co host to the table. <laughs> Look at her! <laughs> She's so excited. Look at her. She's so you are so excited. Are you crying already? You put me by joy because she she's the yin to my yang in excitement. <laughs> I'm glad you're the yang because you're the yang. I'm, so, I'm, I'm so over the moon. I'm she thrilled. Can't, yeah. And I get speechless in a job I'm paid to talk for. It's okay. It's okay. Well, we're happy to have you here. How was everyone's summer? How was your summer, Paul? Well, my summer was great. Well, Sarah and I, we both did a lot of GMA, but I was able to take about a week and a half off. Went to see my sister who recently moved to South Carolina. I'd really never been there. I mean, sitting on the dock of the bay is pretty much what we did. She lives on a lake um, at the base of the Blue Ridge Mountains in South Carolina. I don't know if there are any South Carolinians out there. Oh, I am in love nope. with your state. Well, they're out it there. Was, they're not it, just in Yes, they're not it, in here. it was fantastic. This is the uh, the kids that were jumping off my sister's dock right into the water there, uh, Lake Kiwi. Not the little guy, um, but we had such a fantastic time just unwinding. Excellent, so. excellent, Sarah. Uh, we took our first trip with Alec, which we were dreading. We went to see my parents in Florida, and we had one meltdown on the way there. Um, but then we did arrive, and he was great on the on the actual flight. And Max and I just kept drinking and eating chocolate. We were like <laughs> anything to soothe ourselves. But it was great. It was great. Do I? Me. Well, I had this thing where I had to sell a house this year. Right. You know, and I couldn't sell it. So my cousin Valerie said, "Put St. Joseph in the yard upside down." <laughs> so right. They know. So I said, well, I think it's superstitious. I don't believe it. But I said, because, because I said I would do it. So I, I ordered one. It's 20 bucks or something mm -hmm. with a plastic St. Joseph. Right. I had my Jewish husband do it. Right. <laughs> I figured, let me cover all the bases. And he put it in the yard upside down. And like two weeks later, the house got sold. <laughs> Joseph, be something. Maybe I should join a nunnery. What should I do? <laughs> I threw in the, the, the statue also in, in the price of the house. Right. Which I thought that was, $20 gift. That, like, oh, that is a powerful statue. Yes. So, I mean, look, what am I going to tell you? I don't St. go to Joseph, church. St. Anthony, much, Anthony you know, you lose something, call St. Anthony. So, St. Joseph. No, no. Oh, St. Anthony, right, right. St. Right. Anthony. Oh, St. Anthony yeah. is for lost objects. Go so, you don't. What, about what you were you up to? <laughs> yeah. Well, I finished the second season of Fuller House. <laughs> And we had such a great time. I think season two is even better than season one. It was a thrill. And the other exciting family thing is that my daughter auditioned for The Voice. Oh, nice. And That's she's so going to cool. be on this season. We, we'll see how it goes. But I think we have a little clip of her oh. from the show. Can tell. Starts September 19th, but uh, can't wait to watch she's her. on a team. Her so. voice is <laughs> phenomenal. Thank you. And that's her dream. dream. It is her dream, and she's working hard, and we'll see where it goes. And she's well with done. Adam. How about oh, you? Oh, we, we don't know, know what happened. We don't know. We only saw one chair yeah. turn. How about you, Whoop? Uh, I was around. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole thing. 
That's the whole thing, baby. That's the whole thing. I was around. People saw me. They knew. <laughs> are, is, is, are your teeth better? You had had that surgery. Yeah. Uh, they are better. They're, uh, I have to go in and fix some other stuff now. Because it's, you know, teeth, you got to take care of your teeth. Yeah. So, you know, was a little bit of a pain. But uh, we was good. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm here. <laughs> and uh, we'll be right back with more on top. Coming up, how did the ladies feel about Ryan Lochte's bad behavior at the Olympics? Who won't be cheering for him on Dancing with the Stars? Tomorrow on The View, we're serving up the heat. It's, it's too hot. With an entire day of hot topics. I can't wait. And you never know what'll happen. Whoa. You just can't miss The View. All new tomorrow on ABC. Hi, guys. My first day on The View was August 11th, 1997. I was one of the OGs with Star, Meredith, Joy, and Barbara. And I can sum up in one word how I was feeling that day. Terrified. And although I was terrified all those years ago, I wouldn't change it for the world. Congratulations on 20 years of The View, ladies, and I look forward to 20 more to come. Oh, welcome back. You know, we missed a whole bunch of hot topics while we were away, like 49ers QB Colin Kaepernick refusing to stand for the national anthem and to protest violence against black people. Even the president weighed in on it, saying he understands why some veterans might be unhappy, but that it does shed light on a topic that needs to be discussed. And apparently he's getting a lot of, you know, hat to blowback from people and a lot of support. So what do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, think, I think it's your constitutional right to protest. And I think, you know, there are members of the WNBA and even LeBron James that wore Black Lives Matter um, on, on their shirts during practice. And, and he, Colin Kaepernick, is active in Black Lives Matter. But, and I say kudos to, the, to those particular players. But the, the issue that I have here is that it's just so disrespectful to our American anthem. And it's somewhat contradictory because here he is playing an American sport, getting paid American money from American fans, and yet he can't stand for our American anthem. He and is I, an American. Let's start. He with is that. an American. Yeah. Okay. Yes, he is. And an that American. is the right of, a, has, of an American not to stand right. or, or not to. It is a right. That's all right. It is a right, mm -hmm. but it's very disrespectful. It's very disrespectful not to stand for an anthem that represents what our country is but and the it's, lives it's, that were lost. But he feels it doesn't represent all of us. But there are other ways to us. do it. Well, no, not for him. Not for him, but this is our the constitutional... Yeah, go ahead. The answer that I have, too, is that um, he's on a team, and mm -hmm. he's a team leader. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think that will... That causes conflict because it doesn't represent the whole team. And I think that one way that he's doing it, he is donating a million dollars to various yeah. charities, and I think that's a better way for him to do it. I think he should do it off the field. Mm -hmm. I don't think as a team leader, if he were an individual sportsman, it would be different. But as a team leader, you know, I you think know, it is different. What he's talking about is a very big problem, racism in America. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, I think. For somebody, for the average individual to fight racism in America, that's very difficult. So this is his way of bringing it to people's attention. And he's using his constitutional right. right. It's ironic, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. That the thing that you have to do is actually burn the flag, don't stand up, don't put your hand. Those are the things that make it more American. That's the beauty of the that's Constitution. The well, it makes it even more American to do that. I'm glad we live in a country where you can do that. And I also liked one thing President Obama said. He said, I'd rather see young people getting passionate and getting involved and caring rather than sitting back and not. Mm -hmm. My issue with watching that was just that for me, for some reason, that anthem represents military to me. Whenever I've stood for that, I still hold my hand on my heart, which I know is yeah. old school. But when I, in that moment, I stand and I listen to that song. And it's, it, it just reminds me of people that are doing something I can't. They and don't do this anymore? No, you don't have to. Oh, but and, I do. But and, and that's and that's I, I totally agree. You have a right to protest, you know, but to me it just feels disrespectful to to disrespect the national anthem. And well, in my opinion, but that's just my know, the my. The national anthem Which came you, around in yes. 1930. First of all, it's not like it came around with George Washington. So it can be changed. 
Uh, to me, bombs bursting in air is not my favorite lyric. Oh, and that's probably where I get the idea of the military. Yeah, well, and also, you, America the Beautiful is such a nice song. How do you feel me. about the third yeah. stanza of, of the Star Spangled oh, Banner? Mm -hmm. No refuge uh, save hireling and slave from the terror of flight or gloom from the grave. I mean, listen, people have been protesting, you know, be they athletes, uh, who won uh, gold medals, who stood on the podium and did this. Yeah. You know, there have always been. The bitch about all of this is we're still protesting the same thing. That's the awful, yeah. that's the awful part, mm -hmm. you know. So people, you know, find the ways that they can, that they can do it. And yeah, he's given money, he's doing all kinds of stuff, and he's also made, tipped his hat, and spoken to veterans and said, listen, this has nothing to do with you. This has to do with a country where I don't feel I'm represented. And he, and, yeah. he did change from sitting to kneeling because kneeling. he did consult people in the, in the military that said, you know, maybe it'd be nicer if you kneeled. Yeah. I, but the one thing I also want to know is what's next, though. We hear about, you know, the attention to this issue, and I sit back and I say, I'm listening, I, I've heard you. Mm -hmm. What do we do next, though, in application of the issue? Well, like, it, what raises, can I it supposedly raises your consciousness, which is the first step before changing. Well, so that's all really he can do, I well, think. Well, Candace just brought up a point, too. He's going to be donating some money as well. But, you know, we know what people are against, but what are they for? You know, instead of coming to the table and said, I don't, saying, I don't want to do this, well, what, let, let's come to the table with some solutions. Yeah, actually, we have, done that. We, have done we have done that. We have come to the table with solutions, you know? But it's really, it's really about people recognizing that there's an issue. Mm -hmm. Actually recognizing that there's an issue and not assuming that someone is being disrespectful to the song, but saying, I'm not feeling it. Because, you know, we had this discussion eight, almost eight years ago. Uh, oh, sugar. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. I'll, I'll tell you what it was when we come back. What I was talking about earlier was just that, you know, eight years ago when people were very upset with President Obama for staying in Reverend Wright's church mm -hmm. because he was saying, you know, to hell with America. I'm mad as hell at America. And people Reverend didn't Wright understand. Was that. Reverend Wright was saying it. And people kept saying, well, he should be leaving, that he should leave the church. And I said, do you understand why? Reverend Wright is angry because he fought in World War II for other people's freedom, mm -hmm. came back and had to step off the sidewalk for white folk <coughs> because his freedom wasn't, it wasn't there. So maybe sometimes folks might feel, and these young people who are coming back who are marching, veterans who are marching saying, you know what, we're fighting for everybody else's freedom, but stuff is happening to us and no one's paying attention. So that's what I was talking yeah. about. So, and thank God we live in America because mm -hmm. we're one of the few countries where we can protest and not, you know, get beheaded as long as you're not on social media. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there have been a lot of conspiracy theories apparently about Hillary Clinton's health because of coughing fit, you know, that she's had on the campaign trail. <laughs> but here's her explanation for it yesterday in Ohio. <coughs> 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 Every time I think about Trump, I get allergic. <laughs> so, and it had us asking the question, why do so many Americans, why are they so anti-Hillary? You know, she's the, she could be the least popular presidential candidate in modern American history, uh, right behind Donald Trump. I mean, so why is she so rev reviled? She has a history of scandals and lying and... But the thing is, it's more it's, and emails and it's more than one thing that we were watching uh, my husband and I, the CNN special last night about her. And I learned things about her, just like I did in Bill Clinton's speech at the mm -hmm. Democratic National Convention. When she's described uh, or I read about her or watch a program about her, I'm like, 
I should love this woman. Like when she when she talks about her causes and things, there are two disconnects for me. Why do I not feel that when I see her? So why don't you? I, that's what I'm asking. What I was do you hoping you'd have a brilliant answer. I don't know. And the other thing is the response isn't just we don't like her. People hate her. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I don't understand. You know, I can relate to some of it as a comedian because men, a lot of men do not like to see a woman with a microphone. You know, it's like a powerful position. I'm not saying all men, mm -hmm. obviously. But a lot of, and women too. It's like, an, an, excuse me, a woman in a powerful position, it's very off-putting. If she were a guy, you'd never have these conversations. I believe I, me. I, dis I disagree with that in some respects. And I do think, sir, I do think that there is a large contingent that just hasn't liked Hillary for a long time, but then there are a lot of people, and I think this is why her untrustworthy numbers are higher than they ever have been, because of the, the, the recent email issues. And the fact that the stuff that's come to light, she didn't know the, what the C classification meant. She didn't know how to identify classified information, yet she's unequivocally said, I've never sent or received classified information. The fact that she had 13 devices and destroyed a lot of them, and then she wiped her server. I think people, people have a lot of questions, and if you have nothing to hide, then why are you going to such great lengths to hide things, and I think that's why her untrustworthy but you know numbers what? are off it's, the it's not, an equal, it's not a, an equal equivalency in a way. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's not a, it to, to him, and I won't even say his name because I can't even say it. Oh, Donald Trump. Voldemort. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy who has a history of racism. Uh, he, 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 he doesn't pay his workers, you know. Um, he's, he's a misogynist. He's a sexist. Uh, the, the things that he said about the Mexicans, that they're raping. The things that this man has said and done in his life the people that he associates with. I mean, look at the people who are around him. Sexual harassers and other pervert types, allegedly. This is what you're talking about. Wait, just let me finish this point. So what you have on that side is him. And on her, there is like a list of wonderful things she has done. You know? And she, she maybe she lied a couple of times. But he's a liar. There's a difference between everyone in this room has lied. He is a liar. He lies about everything. Having said that, <laughs> we do have to go. <laughs> but we will ask Hillary's daughter, Chelsea Clinton, about this because she'll be here live with us on Good. Friday. <laughs> they asked me to be a part of the 20th season, and guess what I told them? I'm in. I'm coming up next. Face it, there are few people funnier than Tracy Morgan. You know? Yeah. And we're. And because we know that, we're not going to waste a lot of time on an intro. Please welcome back to the view, Tracy Morgan. First time you've been back to the view since the accident. It's great to see you. How you? you I, we know how you're doing. What's going on? I'm glad to see you, man. Hey, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you guys have me a part. It's, uh, it's, it's two decades, you know. Yeah. That's 256 fortnights. <laughs> That's two weeks in Shakespearean days. Yes. Yeah. So, so I'm glad to be here. I know that. And you walked I, down I learned that when I got my GED. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you walked down the aisle yeah. with your lady yeah. who saved your life. Yeah. 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 That was my, that was my motivation. Oh, she's, she's gorgeous. That's my baby. That was my motivation. You know, I was in a wheelchair, and I, that was my motivation to work very hard in the therapy so I could learn how to walk again and speak again and right. all those things. I wanted to walk my wife down the aisle. Thank I ain't you. want no cane. And you did Nobody it. wanted cane. No. Nobody want a cane. Nobody. Unless it's a candy cane. You don't want a cane. Unless it's a candy cane. Christmas time. That's and it. you got a candy cane. Yeah. I got this Jesus on right here. I that, see when that. I was in heaven, that's who I was hanging out with. Mm -hmm. So how was the We were running the heaven? streets of heaven. Were you? The streets. Were you running the streets of heaven? Hey, G. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been great, the first year of marriage? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was nice. Your wife took care of you? Yeah, she still does every day. You know, it's all good. Uh, like last night, she made lasagna with six different cheeses. Oh, how about six? that? Six? Yeah. That's love. <laughs> that is love. She put her foot in it. <laughs> she don't cook, she put her foot in it. And you have an adorable little girl named Maven who yeah. turned three in July. That's my Maven. big girl. Yeah, and you, you said you have full conversations Aww. with her. What do you guys like now, talking about? Like, yeah. Oh, she's That's ridiculous. my baby. She backstage, she just woke up, she good. She's precious. Okay, the other day she was eating and I was just gazing at her. Uh. I gazed at my ladies. Mm -hmm. I gazed, they need that gaze. Mm -hmm. And she was eating and she looked at me and said, what? <laughs> like, where you learn that? It's, it, they're born with it. Yeah. They're born with that's it. That's a three years old. That's a personality. That's they know what they are. They know what they So I just guide her. We're so happy to hear that you're back on the road um, doing your stand up tour, picking up the pieces. And you say that you feel funnier now than ever before. How so? I think I had a talk with Richard. Mm hmm. Yes, I you think did. Richard was in my ear up there. Yep. I think Richard said, go get him. Yeah. That's it. You can't now I feel, stay. Yeah. You're talking about you Richard Pryor. Yeah. No. Oh, Richard Pryor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, George Garland, Lucia right. Ball. And as long as I do stand up in the spirit of the God, the comedy gods that came before me, I'm protected. Yeah. yeah. As long as right. I do it yeah. in the spirit right. of them. That's actually a part of your show. Tragedy um, into comedy. Yeah. yeah. I, like last night, I was watching a yard couple with Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. Yeah. They just don't do it. I watch uh, Silver Streak. Yeah. Because Gene Wilder was magic. He, he was. was. Yeah. He was. You joke in your show about. I mean, I know you're wearing Jesus right there, but you joke in your show about going to heaven. Yeah, Yeah, I've seen a few people up there. I've seen Biggie Smalls. He looked good. He lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the diabetes under control. Was it crowded? Yeah. Or Elvis Presley still look like crap. Right. <laughs> can't, look, can't leave that fried food alone. No. Well, you know. It's Old Dirty Bastard got 10 new kids already. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no. Hey, congratulations, because you've been nominated for an Emmy. Yeah. As oh. for your returning back to Saturday Night Live as a host. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it had to be, it was a very emotional homecoming for you. It and was. What, it was. It, you know, Lauren Michaels wrote that monologue right there, and I made fun of my injuries, so I never had to talk about it again. Mm -hmm. And that's what he said, you know? Oh. But in between dress and air, because there's two shows, a dress show and an air show, I got it in my own head. Right. Because you have to have a dresser. She takes you from set to set. Mm -hmm. Donna. So that you can change. Donna, you yeah, know Donna. I know Donna. I was Donna's page. the best. Yeah. I love you, Donna. <laughs> and um, I started to think that the audience was looking at me like maybe something's wrong with me or cripple and something's wrong with me. I thought they were feeling sorry for me. So in between, dress A, I spoke to Lauren. I said, Lauren, I don't know if I can do this because the audience. And he simply said, Tracy. They don't care about that. They just happy you here. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I felt that when I came out here. Good job. I love you. Thank you. And, and, and when that was it, I let go and I let God. Just did yes. my thing. Amen. Have fun. And I love the cast. Those young people. When I went, when I went to the to the pitch meeting on Monday, mm -hmm. I know they were just giving their best. Yeah. They were giving their best. Some young cast members were giving their best. And it just brought me to tears. And when I left Lauren Michael's office, I went to the cellar and grabbed a mic. That's how inspiring it was. And I did five minutes. Did five minutes. And that was the first time I touched the mic since that night. Oh. Wow. Good for you. But I, I de I've dedicated my career from this point on to Jimmy Mack. Mm. That was my OG. Mm -hmm. When I was out of line, he would grab me and say, let me talk to you, young blood. That's right. You know, it was 4 o'clock in the morning, talking about jokes and laughing. And <coughs> I remember he gave me a joke, Donald Sterling. Uh, had that oh my God. And I did it on stage that night, and I looked to the side, and he was just dying. Yeah. He didn't care about that stuff. He just loved to see young comedians get off. Yeah. To come yeah. off like a fat rat in a cheese factory. <laughs> <laughs> like a fat rat in a cheese factory. And, you know, that was, that was, that was the thing. And I, I miss him daily, but I know he's here with me. He's here right now. Because mm -hmm. he told me he would never leave me, and I believed him. Yes. And just so, so everyone knows, me. that was your friend who yeah. passed in yeah. the accident. Yeah. And you, you know, listen, you will do for others what he did for you. That's, that's how you pass it on. Oh, that's what I want to do if I inspire anybody in this room, or anybody in this world, then I'm fine with that. That's it. Bobby, you can do it. And one more thing, 
I met the first responder. I don't know his name off top because my memory is bad now. But I met him at a show that I did in New Brunswick. Yeah. And he was like in pieces and his mom's whispered in my ear. He's the one that pulled you out the truck that night. He was covered in your, your blood from head to toe. Right. And I just hugged him and we cried, yeah. And I thanked him and I said, God bless you. And I said, thank you for having him. All of it is like a chain reaction. Yeah. yeah. You know, he was here to do that. Yeah. So. You know, you know, Tracy, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary. And you, you have been a friend for a long time on the show. Um, what is um, one of our favorite memories of you is the hilarious impression of our former View co-host, <laughs> Star Jones. <laughs> we have a clip. Let's watch the clip. USA Today, it said that 30% of Americans think President Clinton should resign. Star, what do you make of this? Yes, I am a lawyer. <laughs> what this means is that 30% is a portion of 100%. Like, for instance, if, if we was looking at a pie, one third of that pie would want the president to resign. And the rest of that pie would, would be delicious. <laughs> Star Jones say if she were here today? I am a lawyer. Let's <laughs> see your pretty face. <laughs> Man, thank God you're back. By the way, by the way, look at I just want to say, Star knew about this today. So. Star Jones, I love you too. Yeah, she yes. Star knew about this. Thank you. Thank well. you very yeah. much. So Thank she you. she she's fine with it. Yes. <laughs> um, what choice does she have? So I think one time the elevator. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so you know what? Uh, we say a thank you to Tracy Morgan. You can catch him on his Picking Up the Pieces tour through December. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor. Get out there and see it. He is back. He is funny as hell. And it's nobody better. Tracy will also be performing at Carnegie Hall. Do you hear me? He will be at Carnegie Hall as part of the New York Comedy Festival. If you can get to Carnegie Hall, you want to see him at Carnegie practice, Hall. Practice, practice. We'll be right back. I've had to live with your imitation and impersonation of me for the last 20 years. And it's irritating. It's so damn dead on. Ha, ha, I can't help them. but love you. And love it. I adore you, Tracy. And you know that. I'm far too busy to be there right now. Because you know, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> Happy anniversary to the ladies of the game. 20 years of being fabulous. New Yorkers here, and we're very happy that some VIP guests who happen to have something to do with the city stop by to help us kick off season 20. Please welcome the mayor of New York City, Bill de Blasio, and the first lady of New York City, Charlene McRae. Hey! <laughs> Appreciate you coming to the what what you doing here, sir? Whoopi, we got eight and a half million New Yorkers who want to salute the view. Oh, oh, oh wow. so, we're gonna do that. This is a formal act of law. Oh. Ready? Okay. Yeah. We're gonna read you just a little bit. Oh wait, wait, hold on. Barbara, this one's for you. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to read you a little bit. It says, New York has always been at the forefront of media entertainment, and our city has played a vital role in shaping the history of television. And on August 11th, 1997, ABC premiered a daily talk show created by the legendary Barbara Walters. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> and you'll all agree with this. It immediately enlivened our country's daytime TV landscape. <laughs> Delay. 
The View is renowned as a forum where no subject is off limits and the hosts have candid, irreverent, and sometimes heated discussions about current hot topics and matters ranging from politics, religion, and health to fashion, relationships, pop culture, and more. By amplifying the voices of an array of women and tackling issues with both humor and gravitas, The View exemplifies the diversity, creativity, and boldness that define our great city. Yeah, we get to keep it. But listen, now the official part. And now, therefore, I, Bill de Blasio, mayor of the city of New York, do hereby proclaim set Tuesday, September 6, 2016, in the city of New York as The View Day. But particularly on behalf of Barbara Walters, the cast and the crew who has kept the show going for 20 years, we want to say thank you. Uh, Y'all are working on a lot of different programs for New York City, from helping tackle mental health issues to taking care of new moms. Check out our website for more information of, on what New York is doing and how you can best be affected by it. We'll, we'll be right back. giveaway. So for the next 20 days, someone in our audience and a viewer at home is winning a luxurious vacation at some of the hottest spots around the world thanks to our sponsor, Wyndham Rewards. So Sarah is blindfolded in this wind booth, which is full of numbers that represent today's studio audience. And she's about to pick a winner. Sarah, are you ready? Yes, I am. I am going to turn it on and your audience numbers will start My name is Alan. Alan, you look thrilled. Are you going to jump in? Okay. <laughs> you just won the first of 20 trips we're giving away for the next 20 days to celebrate season 20 of The View. So let's see where you're going. You won a five-night, six-day trip for two with round-trip airfare to Puerto Rico, courtesy of Wyndham Rewards. The Wyndham Grand Rio Mar Beach Resort and Spa has beachfront dining, world-class golf, and 500 acres of recreation and beauty. It's one of the finest Puerto Rico hotel and resorts in the Caribbean. Yet. We want to announce our first online winner as well. Congratulations, Sarah Lateral from West Babylon, New York. Woo! So let's see where she is going. You won a five-night, six-day trip for two with round-trip airfare to enjoy Santa Monica, California, courtesy of Wyndham Rewards. The Wyndham Santa Monica features beautifully decorated rooms and suites with contemporary decor, ocean views, and modern comforts. Soak up the SoCal sunshine by the outdoor heated pool or stroll down to beautiful Santa Monica State Beach and the Santa Monica Pier. Midnight Eastern tonight to see how to enter for a chance to win tomorrow's vacation. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Um, good luck, Sarah. The goggles are a good luck. Always a good thing when you watch The View. We always say y'all be tripping. We want you to have a great day and take a little time to enjoy The View. Yeah.